Lord, but I want to thank Pastor Amen and his wife and the, and the I was going to say the elders, the pastors. <laughs> so, some of them are older, but, uh, but amen. But I want to thank them, amen. It's great to labor in the Lord with these men and with all of you, amen. I know we got an awesome church, amen. And God is doing something great here in the heart of the bay. You need to get excited, amen, because this is just the beginning. Bless the Lord. And uh, go ahead and open your Bibles up with me. Go ahead and stand with me well, one more time. I'm sorry. I should have just had you. you can, amen. You get some exercise this morning or this afternoon in the, in the house of God. And open your Bibles up. First of all, I want you to mark Hebrews 11, chapter 11. We're going to read there in a minute. And I want you to then turn to Genesis chapter 7. Amen. Genesis chapter 7. And I know a pastor's been speaking on vision, amen. I, I wanted to also speak on the same thread. But I want to talk, um, my theme today is, that, is God's vision for the family, amen. Because how many know the family is very important to God, amen. God created the family. And, and the church and, and our society operates through the family. And we're going to just take a look at it th- today. And I know that God has a word for you. Amen? Genesis chapter 7. This is how it reads. It says, In the 600th year of Noah's life, on the 17th day of the second month, on that day all the springs of the great deep burst forth. Somebody say burst forth. And the floodgates of, he- of the heavens were opened. It says, Rain fell on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And on that day Noah and his sons, Shem, Larry and Curly. Uh, just seeing if you're awake. Shem, Ham, and Jepheth, together with his wife and the wives of his three sons, entered the ark. Amen. And let's turn to Hebrews eleven seven. And here it says, by faith. Somebody say, by faith. by faith. When warned about things not yet seen, in holy fear, built Noah built an ark. To save his family. And by his faith he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. Let's pray. Father, I pray that, Lord, for the next 30 minutes, 25 to 30 minutes, Lord, that that you would impact the family today, Lord God. That you would impact marriages. That you would impact, Lord, children and and grandfathers and and great-grandfathers and the family unit as a whole in our world and in our church mostly. And Father, we thank you today for everything you're doing. We give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. You may go ahead and have your seat. Amen. Now I want to talk on a thread about knowing that God has a vision for the family. Can I get an amen? You see, the family is the primary cell of society. And it's the primary cell within the church. In fact, the, the family that participates in the very life of the church is a concrete expression of the church. In other words, those of you or I that are in the house of God, serving God, drawing from God, getting close to God, is that the way we live is an expression of the church itself, if we're obedient. Amen. Because we could, now some of you were wayward and hayward in the past. But thank the Lord. Amen. The strength, health, and vitality of any society and of any church are based on the health of the family within that church or within that society. In the family, we come into being, it's where we're born, it's where we're loved where we're nurtured, and we grow in our identity as, as, a, as a group, as a family. And it's where, it, and it's through relationships we give life to others that are around us, amen? And it's how, we're, that, that, that's how God uses the family, not only the immediate family, but the church family. We have people here that you might not have brothers, you might not have sisters, you might have a mother or a father, but I just like Rena said, 
my spiritual father. He came for me. See, we're here to build each other up and to, and to be there to support one another. And we touch one another in various ways. And it's very important for us to understand. We get support from the family. We get confidence from the family. We get encouragement from the family. We meet one another's needs through the family. We care for one another through the family. But not all families are like that. Can I get an amen? But in the church, through the family of God, it's a place where faith and obedience is taught. And it's where we learn how to walk with God and to draw close to God so that we can make an impact, not only in our media family, but through those around us. Amen? In our workplaces. Amen? Praise the Lord. How many know we need to make an impact? Those people you work with, they're going to be your, they're your family. Amen? They're family in our society. They're going to be family in the house of God once they give their life to the Lord. Amen? And so it's time. You might as well just start making, you know, friendships now. Getting close now. See, but it, the, it's through the family and in the house of God where faith is taught. And how many know that we need to learn how to trust in God like never before? The Bible says that husbands and wives are to be the expression of the love of Christ for the church. Amen? The husband is to take the lead, the wife is to, to follow, and the husband is to love the wife the way that Christ loves the church. It's an example. It's a, they're, they, they all mix together. Can I get an amen? See, but today the family, if we look around the world, if we look in our society, if we look in our neighborhoods, if we look in the inner city, the family unit is broken right now. There's many families that are broken. When I came into Victory Outreach, my family was broken. But it was because of the love of God. It was because of the grace of God that God came. And you know what? That he put my family back together. And you know what? He did a work within my family. And that, fa that, that work's going to go on. It's not going to stop. See, first of all, the, we need to understand is that the purpose, meaning, and very definition of the family is seriously being challenged and distorted in this modern era. It's under attack. The family's trying to get broken down. Society is trying to, you know what, to, to, to change what God has created as a family to be something different than what God's design is. In essence, we as a society today, we have lost a Judeo-Christian vision of what a family is. We are at war for the family. If you, don't know, if, you, if you can't see it or you don't understand it. We're at war right now. There's a war going on. There's a heavenly fight going on. There's a supernatural battle that's taking place. And you and I, we need to get in the fight. And we got to start standing up for our belief and for what God stands for within our life. We're under attack from the world. And ultimately from the enemies of God. Because there are many. The other thing is that, you know, what happens in a family is that many times uh, because of there's no relationship with God, there might be a belief, but there's no intimate intimacy with God or no relationship with God and there's no reading of the Word of God, is that there are many problems that take place in our family and there's many people that have gotten wounded in the family. And, and often what, what takes place is because of that, is that you and I as a family, we can't go forward and become all God wants us to be because we're wounded. And we don't know how to heal. We don't know how to, you know what, allow God to heal us. We don't know how to learn to allow our lives to, you know what, to be strengthened by God and to allow God to do the work that he needs to do so that he can fix things. How many know God will fix things? God will make things right. God will make the crooked path straight. Because he's a God of purpose and destiny. See, today there is a great need for families to hear God's truth about marriage and family 
and to experience the healing of God within their life. That's why you got to invite somebody to church. we got to bring families to church, families that are struggling, families that are falling apart, families that are hurting one another because God has a purpose and a destiny. If they would just come together, if they would give God a chance, if they would understand what God's purpose and divine destiny is for their lives. See, you need to know what God thinks and not what the world or society says what a family is, but what the Word of God says. Because when I found out what the Word of God said, everything changed. Everything changed. Everything. <laughs> EGR. Amen. Come on. Everything changed. You see, as the truth about God's design for the family and marriage is taught and preached, and when it's heard, understood, and modeled and lived out, then healing will begin to take place within our communities and within our society. Amen? Now, the people of Noah's day were in trouble, the Bible says. And how many know that we're living in a dark day ourselves? Huh? Today, you know what, we live in a per we're living in perilous times also. A lot of things are happening around the world. But how many know that God gives us a message of hope that provides us with the wisdom about what to do during perilous times, during difficult times, during times of hardship, during times of, 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 uh, of war, during times of, of turmoil and fighting, all these different things that the enemy is trying to bring into our society. See, God saw how, cor how corrupt the earth had become for all the people on earth had corrupted their ways, the Bible says. So God said to Noah, I'm going to put an end to all the people, for the earth is filled with violence because of them. And we have a lot of violence going on today. I am surely going to destroy both of them and the earth, Genesis 6, 12, uh, 12 and 13. You see, Noah lived in a time that is very similar to ours. People in Noah's day we're hardened towards spiritual matters. And how many know we live in a society, especially in California? Come on, somebody. Is that where they're trying to take God out of everything. Amen? Trying to take God out of everything. Trying to take anything spiritual. You, you, I just, you read about that guy on that, that football coach that would pray after the game. They fired him for praying. For taking the knee. Amen? <laughs> crazy why because there is a, a the enemy wants to take out that everything that the family stands for and that God stands for so you hear things today during our time even now that you know you hear people say well the Bible is irrelevant in today's world it, it, it's old. It, 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 today, today's world's different. You know, I used to, my boss used to tell me that, and I used to, I, I didn't want to argue with him, but I, I would say, no, you're wrong, you know. And I, I remember, you know, I used to go back and forth, and he used to be, you know, uh, he used to say stuff like that, right? You probably hear it today. You hear like the Bible was written by man. It's not written by God. It's written by man. I, I tell you, yeah, you're right, but it's inspired by God. You also hear people say, it don't matter what the Bible says, because if God really cared, he wouldn't let bad things happen. And they just go on their, their merrily way. Amen? See, well, what the Bible does say is that right before the second coming of the Lord and the end of the world, things will be like they were in the days of Noah. Amen? So tell your neighbor, get ready, because he's coming soon. See, before this day is over, before this week is over, before this month is over, you can find yourself stepping into eternity, because that's how close we are. We're living in dark times. We're living in times like the days of Noah. And one of the greatest prophecies indicating the return of Jesus is the similarity of Noah's day and ours. Matthew 24, 37 says that as it was in the days of Noah, 
so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. So get ready. You see, the ancient world like ours was filled with heartache and term turmoil. But there was an exception to the norm. norm. Amen. How many know the world is going one way? The things of the world are going one way. During Noah's time, the people were all, they were bad. They were crazy. There was violence. They were going one way. But there was one person. Somebody say one person. There was one person who was different. His name was Noah. Huh? And Noah took a stand. When everyone else was swimming downstream into the abyss of sin, Noah was, Noah was headed upstream in a large part, in large part because of his godly heritage. Amen. I can't stress enough the importance of building a godly heritage for your family today. That you begin to build a hair godly heritage for your family, for your brothers, for your sisters, for your, your, your sons, your daughters, your great granddaughters. Because it's you that is going to make the difference. My sister, I just heard her say, I hope my, when she said that, I said, oh, come on, somebody. She said, I just want my family to be saved. God's going to save them. You know why? Because you're taking a stand. And God's going to save you and your whole household. So it's very vital, very important that, that you know what, that you stay faithful to God. That you come to church faithfully, that you give faithfully, that you begin to set a standard within your family that you know what, that you know that it continues on and not only that, but it grows. You see, Noah's family included such spiritual giants as his great grandfather Enoch. Enoch, the Bible was one of one of a few men that the Bible says oh, he walked with God. Huh? Enoch walked with God. It's important you got to start walking with God like never before. You got to start getting close to God, start walking with God so that the spiritual heritage will pass into your family and into your loved ones. The Bible says that Enoch talks to God and that, you know, he didn't die. He was just gone. The Bible says God took him. Huh? He didn't experience death, but he was so close to God that God just took him. He said, just come on, come on. You know, you're going to bypass. You, you got a free pass. Come on. You ain't experiencing death. You're coming with me. It also, Enoch was his great-grandfather, and Methuselah, somebody say Methuselah. Say it three times quick. No. <laughs> Methuselah was his grandfather. Enoch was his great-grandfather, but Methuselah was his grandfather. Amen. And, and what's significant about Methuselah? He's the oldest living human being to ever walk the face of the earth. Huh? He was old. Huh? He was older than Pastor Greg. <laughs> I love that, brother. I love him. Just <laughs> Amen. He was old. He was old though. He lived 969 years. But I always wondered. Yeah, I remember, you know, like you ever watch Jeopardy and then they have the Bible section and there's the questions on there and you're trying to get them right, and then, you know. Who was they had? I remember one time they had the who was the oldest living man on the face of the earth. It was Methuselah. But there's something significant about Methuselah, amen. And in studying this, I God God I God showed me it is that his his uh, Methuselah, his uh, grandson Noah. See, God had already. This is how God works. God's God's heavy. God is too heavy. God had already spoke to Enoch and told Enoch that, you know what? One day, man, I'm going to use your family. I'm going to use your family in a mighty way. And they're going to do something. Your, your great-grandson and your grand, your grand, yeah, your great-grandson Noah, he, I'm going to use him to be a man of God in the darkest times of this earth. He's going to be my vessel. Right? And so... What he did is he told Enoch, well, it is believed that, he, that Enoch knew that once, when Methuselah, when Methuselah died, 
is that that was going to be the time for the flood to come forth. Matter of fact, Methuselah means to bring forth. Huh? It means death and scent. And so the reason that Methuselah lived so long was because God's grace was holding it back. God's love was giving people an opportunity to, you know what, to get right with God. And I believe that even right now that at a time like this, that God's ready to send his son, but he's holding back because of his love, because of his grace, because of his mercy. But how many know that we need to get right? We need to, you know what, we need to get a hold of God like never before because God is getting ready to unleash something great and awesome. Noah's father, Lemek, he lived 777 years. Come on, somebody. 777. Huh? Talking about hitting the big one. But the reason uh, Methuselah lived so long was that was his heritage. Enoch, his great grandfather, walked with God. Methuselah, God used him to, he didn't let him die for a long, long time. And then his father Lemek. But you see the heritage that was passed down. It was passed down from Enoch. And it, it, li- it went through Noah. That during dark times, Noah stayed faithful to God. See, in American universities and other institutions of higher learning, there is an ongoing argument that environment dictates character. Amen? Environment dictates character, which is true to an extent. Right? Because I, you know, if, if, if you put somebody, right, now, <laughs> how many know there's a, there's a weddle in every Mexican neighborhood, right? There's a homeboy named Weddle, right? There might be a couple of them. But I remember I had a homeboy here. We used to call him Gazoo. Amen? And his little brother, we called him Skull Murphy. Because they had b- big nuggets. Let's just put it that way. But he was a great guy, right? Rick Kaczynski. I lo- he was a good dude. He was a great guy. But he was just a regular, him and his family. You know what they were? They were, they were a Caucasian family. Great, came from a great family. He had a great, his parents were great, good people. But he became a homeboy. Huh? He became one of the homies in Dakota. Right? And I remember I was young. When I was like 16 years old, they left him on the doorstep because he overdosed. And they just left him on his mom's doorstep. And he died right there. But it is in, in, in the, you know what, in the, we can become the product of our environment without God. That's what I'm trying to say. And many of us that happened to us in the neighborhood where we grew up, whether it was in Dakota, whether it was in Hayward, whether it was in Palmasia, whether it was in Oakland, no matter where it was, we kind of became, you know, like everybody else around us because we, we let it impact us. But here we also see in these verses, we also learn that, it is, that a godly heritage will also impact your your character and your family. A godly heritage. We see that here in the life of Noah. That's why Victory Outreach is able to go into inner cities around the world and raise up godly families in the midst of chaos, in the the midst of drug addiction, in the midst of all kinds of crazy things around the world that we can go anywhere and we can see God turn a, a family that's lost and bound and messed up into a family that's blessed, into a family that has a destiny, into a family that has a purpose, in a family that God will begin to do something great and awesome within their lives. That's why we're able to do it. And you know why? It's because we have a great heritage. Huh? We have a vision from God. The vision that Pastor Sonny has, it's a, it came straight from God. And it is a vision that is impacting the world. Can I get an amen? You see, Noah's life was like a beautiful rose that blossomed in the desert. In the midst of ungodliness, Noah was a God-fearing man, steadily raising his family on a daily diet of faith and obedience. 
How many know we need to model faith and obedience for our families? What is your family's daily diet based upon? Is it based upon going to church and reading your word and, and taking time in prayer, taking time as a family to greet one another and to spend time together as a family so that we can impact and build each other up in the faith? Or are we just watching the Kardashians? Huh? Come on, somebody. Phoebus and Furby or something like that. The things of this world, we're just chasing after money, power, prestige. Is that what we're imparting into our families? But I believe we need to impart the things of God, the godly heritage that we possess, the godly heritage that has been given to you and I. There's no substitute for a godly heritage. It's one of the greatest gifts that you can receive or pass on to your children and to your family. You need to do everything within your power to pass on your faith. If you're unfaithful, it's very possible your kids might be unfaithful. They're going to model what you do. Huh? But if you stick with the Lord, if you have faith in God through thick and thin, through hardship, through difficulty, through, you know what, through trial and error, if you display, you know what, faith in God, your kids are going to know who to rely on. They're going to know where to go to. They're going to know what to do because they're going to see that you held on to the Lord. So you need to do everything within your power to pass on your faith and to raise your family in a way that honors Christ. Children, you need to understand that your parents and grandparents, they aren't your history. They are your heritage. It's a difference. They're your heritage. Huh? You got to catch that heritage. You got to receive it. There's three ways to pass on godly heritage. Really quick. I'm just going to go through them really quick. And the first one is, and it's easy, is you got to get saved. You have to receive God. How many know that our heritage comes from God? Our heritage comes from the Most High God. It comes from Jesus. And, it, and when we get saved, how many know that we receive the heritage and, and everything that God possesses through Christ Jesus? Jesus is our heritage. He's our ultimate person that will receive what God has for us. It's through Jesus Christ. You need to receive that. In other words, is that, you know what? You got to give everything over to God. You might be coming to church, but have you given it all over to God? Have you said, you know what, God, whatever you want to do, wherever you want to take me, whatever work you want to do in my life, you know what? I'm, 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 you know what? I'm giving my life to you. I'm not, you know what? I'm not here. I'm not going to play games anymore. I'm not going to, you know what? I'm not going to just, you know what? I'm not going to fake the funk anymore. Huh? But you know what? I'm going to allow God to, you know what, to work in me, to get inside of me, to take out what needs to be taken out, to give me what needs to be in my life so that I can do something new, so I can be a new man in God, so I can leave a heritage for my family, so I can impact those that are coming behind me. Right, Ismo? Come on, Ismo. We don't have much time. In Genesis 7, 4, the Bible said that seven days from that God told Noah, he said, seven days from now, I will send rain on the earth, and for 40 days and 40 nights, I will wipe from the face of the earth every living creature. In Noah's day, the people had seven days. Well, they knew probably knew before that because he was building a boat in the, the, right, in the desert because it, it said that the closest water was 500 miles away from where Noah was building the boat. 500 miles. So they're probably, what are you building up? What are you, you know? And so when you, you know, when you, when you come to God and you give God your life, you got to give him your everything. You got to give him, and be, the reason being is because, you know, the boat that Noah built, it didn't have a motor in it. It didn't have paddles. You ever think about that? It didn't have sails. It didn't have a rudder in it. 
It went where God wanted it to go. Huh? And it saved Noah and his family. See, sometimes you need to understand is that you just need to let God do what he's going to do in your life. You're not going to understand everything, but you can best be sure that God is going to save you and your family. And the heavy thing about it is that when God told Noah, Noah wasn't even married yet. See, this ain't just for married couples. Noah wasn't married yet. He didn't have a wife. He didn't have any children yet. So it's important to understand that, that the stand that you make today in the things of God is going to impact your future for generations to come. We don't know how much time is left for you and I, but we do know that Jesus is coming back like, the, like a thief in the night, the Bible says. Suddenly, in the twinkling of an eye, blink your eye, just blink. It's like that. You might, be, you might blink and I'll be gone. We'll be gone. In the twinkling of an eye, Jesus is going to come back. It's getting closer, my friends. It's getting closer, everybody. So we need to give everything to God and let him take us wherever he's going to take us. Huh? No rudder. Huh? No motor. No sail. No navigation devices. Huh? No GPS. Just got a oh, GPS, but it's God's personal system. Huh? Come on, somebody. It's God's GPS. So we need to get saved. We need to get right. Come on, tell your brother, get right. Huh? We need to get right. Huh? And getting right might mean different things for for every one of us. There's things that we need to like. I know when I got saved, you know what I, I knew? I used to work at Noom. When I used to work at Noomi, I used to, on Friday nights, I used to, there was a bar across the street. And everybody would know. I would work nights. And so it would be open for about an hour when we got off. So we had an hour. And not only that, the union hall was on the next block. And, and it was private property. So people would be there till like the sun came up. Come on. And so I, we would go to the bar and then to the union hall and go pay our dues. Come on, somebody. And I used to be there until the sun came up. But, you know, when I got saved, I knew that I couldn't do that no more. When I gave my life to God, I knew I had to make changes. I couldn't go hang out on the corner anymore. Huh? I couldn't, you know what, you know, be going to the bar and cashing my check anymore. But I knew I had to do something different. I couldn't think the same. I had to do something new. I had to get rid of things. And you know what? The enemy's good at it, trying to attach things to your life, trying to raise up the old man, trying to bring back those old thoughts, trying to bring back those old memories, trying to bring back those old things to get you to look back. Huh? But now we know God has another plan for you. You got to look straight. You got to look up. And you got to get rid of the things that God wants you to get rid of. It, it might be getting right with a family member. A uh, family member you don't get along with. You might need to make amends. You might need to say you're sorry. Even if you're right, it doesn't matter. Sometimes we need to be wrong so we can make it right. Huh? Sometimes we need to be wrong so we can be right. <laughs> And the other thing is, uh, you know what, that if you're just living together, you need to get married. You need to make things right. I'm going to say it right now. Look, we, we need to get back on front street. If you're shacking up, man up. Uh, woman up. Uh, and get, Come on, I'll, I'll marry you right after the service in the name of Jesus. Shut up. I'll see you. Just line up over here, pastor. Over, uh, no. <laughs> just make it right. Let's make it right. We got to make things right. Because God is getting ready to unleash some great things here in Victory Outreach, Heart of the Bay. We need to understand that God's definition of a family is a man and a woman. Huh? 
Adam and Eve, not Adam and Steve. And I'll say, you know what, uh, you know, I just, we just need to understand, you know, because I, I have cousins and I have family members, and I love them to death that live that. And then they'll be the first to tell you that, uh, that I love them, and you know what, and I tell them, you know, I don't, I don't believe in, 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 in your lifestyle, but you know what, I love you anyway. I still love you, and God loves you. God has a purpose and a plan for you. But truth needs to be told. The other thing is we need to get into church consistently. See, because if you love Jesus, you'll love what Jesus loves. You'll love the church. God loves the church. Jesus gave himself up for the church. He died for you and I and for the church. And so, you know what? How many know we should be a chip off the old rock? We need to love the church. We need to love God's people. We need to love our leaders. We need to love our ministry. We need to love what God is doing here in the heart. And we need to, you know, we need to get it together. And we need to allow God to get us in to where we're supposed to be and do what God has called us to do. See, God wants to use your family as an instrument of his grace where he can unleash his power, he can unleash his plans, and he can unleash the projects that God has for your life and for my life. See, the story of Noah is an excellent illustration of this, where God used Noah and he used his family in dark, difficult times. And, and how many know that Noah responded with obedience? You need to respond with obedience. Tell your neighbor, respond with obedience. We need to respond and we need to be obedient to what God is doing. In Hebrews 11, 7, and I'm getting ready to close here. Hebrews 11, 7, the Bible says that by faith, somebody say by faith. faith. Noah, when he warned, when warned about things not yet seen in holy fear, built an ark to save his family. And it says here that by his faith, he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness that is in keeping with faith. And so the thing that we need to understand is that Noah's faith saved him. How many know that faith in God will save you? The same way that faith saved Noah is the same way that faith can save you and your whole household today. You can protect your family with, in a lot of different ways. Right? You can bolt up the door. You can buy a gun. You can do all these different things. But the greatest way you can protect your family is through faith, by believing, trusting in God, trusting in God's word, what he has for you, trusting in God that he's with you, trusting in God that he's got your back, trusting in God that he goes before you, trusting in God that no weapon formed against you shall prosper, trusting in God and everything that his word says for your life. In Acts chapter 16, when, when Paul and Silas were in jail, the Bible says they began to sing hymns and they started praising the Lord and a great earthquake came and it shook the foundations of the, of, of the jail and every, everybody's stocks broke loose and they, they could have they all just ran out. They could have just ran. And the Bible says that, you know what, the, the jailer called for lights and they came and, they, you know, they probably candles, whatever. They lit them up and the jailer was getting ready to kill himself. And Paul said, stop. Don't do it. He said, we're all here, brother. Ain't nobody left. And because of that act of faith, because of that act of, of the men that they all stayed because the, of Paul and Silas' prayers, they were all there. This man and his whole family got saved because they stood the course. That, that through, you know what, through hardship, through jail, through all these things that Paul went through, this family got saved. Huh? It's by faith. Lydia and her whole household got saved. You see, dads, we need to take the lead. And we need to claim our kids for the kingdom. We need to lead them to church. We need to lead them in prayer. We need to lead them to know the Lord. We need to lead them by faith. We need to show them, you know what, that we're, that, you know what, that God 
is the, at the direct head of our life and that he's leading and he's guiding us and he's in control. Our kids need to see that. Oftentimes, you know what, when push comes to shove, sometimes we just we fly off the handle and we don't care. Huh? Was it just me? All right. All right, Lord, I repent. Huh? Sometimes we fly off the handle. But how do we know we need to learn to stay calm? We need to learn to surrender unto, unto the, the peace of God. Everything Noah did in reference to the, to the threatened flood was done in the virtue of faith. Is that Noah built that ark. The Bible says his family came in. And right after that, everything else perished. And, you know, uh, back in those days, they didn't have, you know, they didn't have the weather report. They didn't have the, the, the evening news. It was faith. It was straight faith. They never seen rain. They had never seen, you know, what, nothing like that. I don't even know if they knew what rain was. But not, Noah operated in faith. Tell your neighbor to operate in faith. Families, we got to operate in faith today. It's going to be faith. we got to do what God is telling us to do. Noah had an ear for God. His spiritual hearing was alive and well. And now we know that we have to have our eyes tuned to the things of God. Not just when we have a craving. Not just when we're in the desert. Not just when, you know what, once in a while. But how many know it needs to be our daily bread? God's word needs to be our daily bread. We need to impart it into our life like never before. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. If you want to have the faith that can protect your family, you have to be a man or woman of the word. We're going to have the worship team go ahead and come up. So Noah's faith saved him and his family. And Noah's fear for the Most High God moved him to do what God asked him to do. He had a holy indignation for the Lord that, you know what, that he, he didn't want to displease God. He didn't want to fail God. He didn't want to, you know what, he didn't want to be a rancor. But he wanted to do what God called him to do. Noah had faith. And Noah had a fear for God. And the Bible says even, you know what, that Noah walked with God also. Noah's walk was a great witness to his family. And your walk is going to be a witness to your loved ones. It's going to be a witness. Noah won his family to God. I want to ask all the fathers, can your fear protect your family? Noah's did. In the day in which we live, we need spiritual dikes built that will withstand the greatest storms of a lifetime. The storms of life and the storms of eternity. Because the storms are going to come. But you know what? That when the storms came, Noah's family followed him into the ark. That's why we have the church. The church is like an ark. It's a place where we come and we, we bring our families. We get, a hold, we get close to God. God speaks to us. We grow together. We love one another. We, we, we wish the best for we, we grow together. Because it's right here where you're going to be safe from the world. Is when you have the heritage from above operating in your family. Then, then you can't be touched. 
Now, they're gonna, the enemy's going to come, but how we know that, that God's going to make a way? Go ahead and stand this afternoon. Now, there's always going to be some, some family that might not want to follow. And for them, you just got to keep praying and keep believing. But what a thrill it is when those who will follow get on board and they follow. There's no greater feeling in the world when you see your children. When they're, when they're, you know, like, like when they're young, yeah, you make them come to church. They have to come with you because you can't leave them home. Huh? You can't just let them stay home and do what they want when they're small. But you bring them so you can start imparting into them. Let them hear. Let them see. Right? But when they get older, you still gotta you still gotta nudge them. Huh? Like Joshua said, as for me and my household, we're gonna serve the Lord. When you're under my roof, as for me and my household, we're gonna serve God. Amen. You know it's heavy that. Joshua said that when he took over, when he became leader, became the man of Israel. He didn't say, you know what, we have to do this. or we have, He said, you know what, as for me and my house. He didn't say me and my leaders. He didn't say me. He said, be in my house, family. It's through family. God's got a purpose for your family. You're going to make the difference today. You're going to make the difference as the days go on. And those of you that say, you know what? I want the spirit of Noah in my life. That you know what? That, that, that in the midst of darkness, in the midst of turmoil, in the midst of violence, in the midst of all these different things that the world is trying to bring into my life, I'm going to, you know what? I'm going to stand the way Noah stood. I'm going to stay faithful to God. Because I want to see not only me, but my whole family safe in the arms of the Lord. If that's you and you say, you know what? I want to make that stand. I want you to just come to the altar. The altar.